Hey! So I was going to do another edit-heavy intro like I did with the Caliban video, but I'm already working on something like that for the next video, so please have this time and budget conscious bit instead. Do 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 Hi, well, hi, Volt. Did you see the new chick on the block? Yeah, she's there, right? Oh, back there, maybe. Me too. Hey, look, here she comes now. Whoosh. Oh no, Miss Tesla, leave him alone. Please get off of his corp- All right, glad that's over with. So it looks like Voban's family tree has continued to grow. Now, is it simplistic to call every frame that throws the playable techno balls a Voban-like? You know, as if the train man is a subgenre in of himself? Uh, maybe, I don't know. All I know is that Jire is batshit insane and I love her. Uh, Jire is quite the breath of fresh air after the confused mess that was Caliban. I, I still don't know what this dude's goal is. She is much more focused on what she wants to do and it's very easy to pick up on her game plan. She's a big old deeps frame with a focus specifically on critical hits and using her element to amplify those crits. Uh, that element of which, by the way, is electricity if your retinas are currently on vacation. She's kind of an alternate take on Zephyr, a frame that uses crit focused weaponry and spreads its damage output amongst large groups with the use of her tornadoes. But while Zephyr relies on weapon to do the brunt of the damage while her powers simply spread it, Jire can do all of that with her powers alone and doesn't need to rely on weaponry as much. And first, I think we should dive into her passive, as it's the framework of how her entire kit functions, and trust me, it is a doozy of a passive. It grants her powers the ability to crit with the chance increasing by 10% for each electric proc that's on an enemy. And according to the game, this chance can go all the way up to 300%. So if you you get the good brain chemicals from seeing a lot of red math, you might be interested in this. And from my scientific tests, aka me smashing my face into test dummies for 10 minutes, I made a few observations. Firstly, it does take into account stacked electric procs. So each additional stack on an enemy adds to her crit chance. It's not just counting one proc per enemy. Second, just to clarify, this does not boost her overall crit rate. So you can't just pump up your weapon crit chance in this way. And third, the crit rate for her abilities is on a per enemy basis. So it'd be more accurate to say that electric procs don't necessarily increase your crit rate, but rather the odds of the enemy who's currently being electrified taking a crit. And that last part is pretty pertinent because it means that you can't just say, oh, I don't know. Infusing Garuda's blood spike into Jire with hopes of creating a living invincible testa coil that could spike your crit rate through the roof in order to nuke everything in a 10 kilometer radius. Not that I tried or anything. So that passive alone should explain why I described her the way that I did. Jire functions as a sort of hyper snowballing frame. And if you don't know what that means, in games, snowball builds are any build that starts at a low base of power but gradually increases in strength over time. And we actually already have snowball frames already, the most notable being Nidus. With no mutation stack, he is pretty weak, but once he's built them up, he becomes one of the best frames in the game. But whilst Nidus builds his power slowly and retains it at max power for the rest of the mission, Jire is constantly jumping from 0 to 100 on each enemy squad, since she has to rebuild her electric procs for each new group in order to deal her crits. But she goes from 0 to 100 extremely fast, which is what makes her viable. Slow damage buildup is often a nail in the coffin for any wood be deeps frames. Looking at you, Garuda. So now that you have a proper mindset of how to play her, we can delve into her powers. Uh, first off is the orb. Arc Sphere is tossed out as a cool plasma globe that covers a wide area and does a bit of electricity damage every few ticks. And she can have three of these funky balls out at a time. Now I initially wrote this power off as not very necessary for her kit, but when I put it into practice in a steel path run, it really made its use clear. Arc Sphere is a way for Gyre to build and maintain electric pox on enemies in situations where she's not on the move, as it's not too useful in missions where you're constantly jumping from location to location. Though, there are some weird quirks with these little guys, namely three. First, each tick that Arc Sphere dishes out will inflict an electric proc on an enemy 100% of the time. 
Unless it doesn't feel like it. I have no clue what the underlying cause is, but if you throw the funny orb at a single enemy, he will always take an electric proc per tick. But the instant that more than one enemy is involved, it suddenly stops becoming guaranteed. Now, at first, I thought that Arc Sphere was simply only giving out one proc per tick. And thus, if you had multiple enemies in a sphere, only one in that group of enemies would receive the proc. That would explain why we went from 100% chance to to not 100% when adding a second enemy. That is, until I did further tests and saw multiple targets receiving procs at the same time, whilst others just sat there in their electrified hell, wondering if they forgot to turn off their fucking stove. My only other hypothesis was that the chance was decreasing with range from the center of the orb. But then this idiot proved me wrong. So I have no fucking clue why this is happening. So anyone smarter than me, please sound off in the comments because I'm legitimately curious what's going on here. A second thing to note about the sphere is that each one is only able to get to a maximum of six procs on an enemy. Reason being that each stack of a proc has its own individual timer, but toss down another sphere and you can maintain 12 procs, and slapping down your final one can get enemies to 18. So I would suggest to think of Arc Sphere as a way to maintain a good baseline of electric procs within an area, and as a supplement to building electric procs rather than making it your main tool. And finally, hitting a group of of three enemies or more directly with the orb makes the ticks and procs deal more damage. Though I honestly had trouble trying to see the difference, so make of that what you will. And there is one more trick that the Arc Sphere has up its sleeve, but we'll get to that later. Overall, it's a great power. Though if I had to make a complaint, it'd be how it can't affect enemies through walls. Like, look at this. It looks so fucking dumb. Moving on to Coil Horizon. This funny space bowling ball is quite a treat to behold. Gyre tosses it out to roll along the ground, and then after a short period or manual detonation, the ball collapses in on itself and pulls nearby enemies into the center. Now, I, I know that I've used the it's like larva line a few times to describe powers that group enemies up, but look, you cannot look me in the eyes and tell me that this isn't just a larva that got a little too intimate with an electric fence. Oh, and a funny thing about this power, by the way, Coil Horizon is Gyre's Helminth donatable, right? And well, yeah, it has the same pull range as Larva, that being 12 meters, it doesn't have the nerfed range of Helminth Larva. So unless Coil has its Helminth version nerfed, I honestly think it's just a direct upgrade. You know, minus the inability of throwing it up or down, anyway. But let's get back on track. Coil on its own is a fucking fantastic grouping tool, but it especially benefits Gyre extremely well for a few reasons. One, the implosion will always cause an electric proc to every enemy caught in the pull, giving her yet another way of consistently applying procs. Second, the grouping of enemies makes the Tesla coil effect from the electric procs stupid easy to land. And that's all I really have to say about it, it's a pretty simple power, but its strengths are massive. Though, do note, like I mentioned a moment ago, you can't really throw it up or down. And it also has line of sight requirements as you would expect. All in all, pretty good ball. Next up, we have Catholic Grace. Catheter Grace. Touch Grace. Cathode Grace is a self buff that Gyre can apply to herself that increases her overall crit chance as well as her energy regeneration rate. The buff can be seen as a way to drastically shrink your time to kill. Since it gives you an innate crit bonus, it means you need less electric procs to begin hitting your dumb old red numbers. And thus, her wipes speed up dramatically with the buff up. It's essentially a jumpstart to you pumping out your numbers. Though, it has a pitifully small duration, but for good reason. Each kill, whilst you're under its effects, add seconds to the buff duration, up to a maximum of 60 seconds. And the added time does scale with power donation, so each individual kill can provide more time. But the buff does have one significant downside. Once active, it goes into a cooldown, and for the next 60 seconds, you won't be able to activate the buff again. Now, luckily, that cooldown starts when the buff begins, not when it ends. So as long as you kill enough and hold on to a duration longer or equal to 60 seconds, when the buff does wear off, you will be able to immediately reactivate it. Which, hey, that's great. But this buff also has an issue that I lovingly call the Harrow Problem. That is to say, the buff only stays up by you killing enemies. Emphasis on you 
killing enemies. In a game dominated by frames and tools that players can use to obliterate a room before you can even get to it. Now, Gyre is really damn good, but at the end of the day, she does still respect walls and line of sight for the most part. Unlike frames like Saren, if you are not able to get your fair share of kills, your buff will run out prematurely and you will go into that cooldown. So, the buff's usefulness largely depends on one of two factors. A, not being in a team with a biological warfare ape who slams the ground and ends every ounce of life around them faster than you can say fuck, or B, not being in a team at all and playing solo. But there is one very important thing that the game conveniently does not tell you. You see, while I was testing, I would occasionally get duration back on my buff for kills that I know I didn't get. But when I went to test with a friend to find out what was going on, it wasn't happening anymore. I tried seeing if it went up when they killed with weapons or with status effects, with abilities, with their pets, but nothing was happening. So what was going on? Well, turns out that DE's ability description is outright lying to you. It doesn't need you to kill enemies, it just wants you to have a status effect on the enemy when it dies. Doesn't matter who or what does the killing blow, you just need to make sure that the target dies with one of your statuses on it. So I did a test here with my favorite defect of a human being, Barglar. So here's her killing some targets on her own with my buff active. Nothing. Now, here's her killing them after I applied a corrosive proc to them. Yeah. And just in case you were wondering if it just wants you to deal damage before they die, yeah, that's not the case. Here's some enemies that I wounded before, and here's Barglar sweeping them up. And yeah, no difference in the duration. And this is where Duh. comes in with that final ace of its sleeve that I mentioned earlier. Arc Sphere inflicts electric procs in a wide area, and you can have three out at a time. So this lets Gyre carpet an area with them to ensure that she gets procs on enemies before her allies can snipe them out from under her, so that when her buff is up, any ally kills in these orbs will boost her buff's duration. This is a fantastic compromise compared to the nonsense that Harrow had to deal with before his augments. And I hope to fucking god it's not a bug. And lastly, we have Rotor Swell, and... Well, you know how I said that Cathed Grace is a power that lets Gyre jumpstart her damage? Well, Rotor Swell is a fucking 300 mile per hour speeding bulldozer pushing a power plant the size of the goddamn Statue of Liberty! So, let me break it down. Rotor Swell is another buff that grants Gyre a personal AoE field that constantly deals electric damage around her and gives her critical hits a unique effect. When a crit is inflicted, a bolt of lightning is called down onto the target, inflicting an electric proc. And if that sounds familiar, I bet you pull for Raiden. But there's some hidden intricacies to this power. For example, the lightning bolts that are called down on critical hits chain to other enemies. Now, you might be thinking, how is that unique? Electric procs chain to other enemies regardless. And yeah, true, but this is an entirely different effect. See, an electric proc just chains a bit of damage to enemies nearby. These don't do anything besides that, and they're also limited to three meters in range. Now, Rotorswell's chain bolts are completely different. For one, it hurts more, but for another, this puny three meter chain, try fucking 15 meters. And by the way, the chain here inflicts yet another electric proc, something that a normal electric proc chain cannot do. Oh, and by the way, she can also call these bolts down on enemies outside of her field range because the bolts strike from weapon crits as well. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about the aura. Every tick of this AoE deals an electric proc for enemies that are inside of it. So with all of this going on, things can very, very quickly snowball out of control. Gyre's abilities gain crit per electric proc. Rotorsoul's aura causes guaranteed procs per tick, which can then cause crits. Crits, which cause electric bolts to begin falling. The bolts also cause electric procs, which further increases your crit chance, and the chains that the bolts cause also inflict a proc, which increases your crit even more, which increases the frequency of the bolts, which increases the spread of electric procs, which... Okay, okay, so you get the idea. Now, I know that this doesn't look like it's doing a lot of damage, but remember, this isn't even factoring in her one, two, or three. Rotorswell is kind of the appetizer to her damage. It's the rallying call, not the big guns themselves. It truly starts to shine when combined with her three and two, and maybe certain weapons like the Emprex. Especially the Emprex. 
So, like I said at the start, Gyre was such a nice thing to see following the frame that last released. She's focused, she does her job well, has sensible weaknesses, like uh, having zero defensive mechanics whatsoever, and provides a satisfying ability loop. If somehow anyone at DE still watches the nonsense that I put out and, god forbid, reach the end of this video, I want to once again emphasize, have clear directions for your frames. Gyre is a perfect example, and I wasn't really surprised when I learned that Pablo was the one that made this frame. I I mean, sure, I think he also made Urelli, but we can forgive a stroke here and there, yeah? But yeah, I love everything about Gyre. Even if she effectively kicked Bolt off the stage and started pelvic thrusting before levitating off into the aether, 